Welcome to the Heirloom Hour, hosted by The Anxious Tomato. I'm Ashley. And I'm Kate. And we are back for the month of March. In episode 13. Yes, if you're keeping track, or if you'd like to keep track. It's episode 13, you guys. So. We're keeping track. <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely keeping track. <laughs> Make sure to stab that like button and subscribe to our channel for more fun videos. Yeah, we've been doing cool stuff. We've been reviewing Sketchbox. Oh my god. Which actually has been going pretty cool. I was really excited about both boxes. I was too, and I was, from, from one box to the next, I was very impressed with the difference between the two of them. Uh-huh, yeah, the like different kinds of actual product that was sent. Yeah, so it'll be <laughs> fun. We're excited to see that. You should check it out. We want to say thank you to our last month's artist, Stephanie Von Drag. Stephanie. She is so sweet. She is. So happy to be working with her again. Yes. Ecstatic. Oh, oh, yeah. I'm so happy. All yeah. right. So no. this month's <laughs> artist is Sheila Lawfer. And you may notice that her and I share the same last name. What? That's because she's my cousin. <laughs> oh, my God. And she's still living. Where is she living? Is Portland, she, Oregon. She's still, okay, she's mm -hmm. living in Portland. So Sheila does abstract oil paintings. Which and is lovely. Yeah, she's yeah. an oil painter. She's our first artist from Portland, Oregon. Which is great. Yes. So excited. <laughs> I love it when we get people from out of state to, to join our little... You know, art gallery. Our, our little, little gallery, gallery club. Yeah. Our little online art gallery. Sure. If you're interested in being in our art line gallery, please submit your artwork. And if you have questions, you can just totally ask us. If you love any kind of interaction, just come on, work with us. We we love it. So it's great. Great. Yeah. Welcome to our website. As you can see, there's uh, not a whole lot new except for Sheila's artwork, which we have here. Mm -hmm. You can see our sketchbox stuff yep. on uh, Instagram here if you'd like. As always, you can donate to us, absolutely. So let's jump right in. You can go ahead and click here. It's called Little Fences, Little Gates. Which I think is adorable. Isn't it cute? It is super cute. And it goes with, I mean, once you know the origin of her pieces, it goes with it beautifully. So that's great. I, yeah. lo I love that. I think that's really cool. So Sheila is a painter and printmaker living in Portland, Oregon. Her work is influenced by folk art and the rural landscapes of Pennsylvania where she grew up. Yes. She has a website. And an Instagram. And an Instagram. Which is So lovely. you can check out both of those things. Mm -hmm. Here's the gallery here. I kind of like looking at it as a whole. Uh, these pieces were submitted to us on the white backdrop like this. So we decided to keep it like that. And it looks lovely. It looks great. It we're very open to you, the artist, having the show look the way you want it. So I was happy to have, you know, them hosted like this with rather than cutting them out. Yeah. And, and having, having them on them our be, yeah. white background. Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, all the pieces are untitled. Actually, yes. I don't know. This one has the word rail written on it. And it says, it says, um, Split, split rail split rail on the <laughs> on it which i think is great although we weren't given titles for any of them so we're rolling with the untitled here yep yeah uh those, this is an oil it's a nine by twelve mm -hmm. everything uh i think is for sale but you do have to inquire with the artist directly for that so yes. please contact us or the artist sure if you would like to purchase yeah we can definitely help facilitate that absolutely artwork, yes so this is the first one untitled 2021 okay. This one is much more cho more choppy than the others. If we once we go through, there's a lot more blending involved. Okay. This one I feel is um, m more abstract than the other. Right, right, right. Due to the it's chunkier the colors. The large symbol instead of there's a lot of repeating ones coming up. Mm -hmm. It also has a more blue color scheme. It does. Um, there's a lot of pink being used in a lot of the other ones. So this one's I feel like a little more dark. Yes. Than some of the other ones. This one's my favorite. Great. This mm -hmm. is a great piece of artwork. Oil 2020. So the other Two. one was oil Sorry, on canvas. Uh -huh. This one's oil on linen. Yep. Most of them are oil right. on linen. Correct? I actually prefer linen as too. a medium because canvas, I think, is too textured. I don't like the texture on canvas. So it's it's I definitely a case by case basis. If you like the texture, it works. But for this, I think it works better as a mm -hmm. on the linen. And this is that repeating iron fence mm -hmm. ideal that I was mentioning in the first one. It is kind of like looking through a fence. It is. And the more you go through each of her pieces, the more you can kind of see that blurred landscape behind mm -hmm. it. If mm -hmm. you kind of focus your eyes, or not, unfocus your eyes and let, let it, it's like you're looking through a fence. It is like, like you're looking through a fence. Yeah. And all of her pieces have similar mm -hmm. feelings mm -hmm. of that, which I think is great. I am just such, I'm so into the color pink that anytime there's pink involved, I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> enamored by the pink. <laughs> There's the pink. 
Again, the pink. 2022. Yeah. So a lot of these are very recent. Yep. It has the large symbolism again with the kind of iron fence curling and a more like peacock style. Ra yeah, rainbow kind of patterning. Mm -hmm. so, not rainbow coloring, but like a an yeah. even patterning peacock feather. I guess I was going to yeah. say that as well. Also a nine by twelve. This one's on linen. I like the color scheme on I do too. this one. I think it's great. Sheila does make mugs out of her artwork too. That she makes like ceramic mugs. I could see this <laughs> translating into mugs really well. <laughs> it does. It with does the curly and the really pastel well. colors. I still live anxious to me. Don't need to get themselves one. We can have them on the Ooh, show. I love that. Uh, they're so small. Nine by twelve is so small, but not intimate. It, <laughs> yeah, it is intimate. Yeah. And it, it looks put small it in here a, too. Yeah, you'd put it in a in a space that is in a smaller space in your home. So if you're thinking about a place to put it, you'd put it in like a hallway or like a, you know, a smaller space that mm -hmm. would, yeah, mm -hmm. that makes you focus on it a little I more. I personally really like this piece. I used it for the flyer. Right, mm -hmm. okay. The orientation was, you know, adapted for the flyer, but mm -hmm. this could be my favorite piece in that sense where I just feel like this embodies Sheila. Yeah. I mean, I've spent a lot of time with you her. <laughs> no, and this kind of reminds me of those, like, um, those, like, metal spinning things at parks for kids mm -hmm. where you sit on them and then somebody runs oh, around yeah. and then jumps on. I Some don't know. kind of, like... Kind of a merry-go-round yeah. sort of thing. Uh, okay, yeah. So, like, playful. Uh-huh. Very playful. Uh -huh. Whimsical. Uh, juvenile. Whimsical. Mm hmm Yeah. All those kinds of things are coming to mind here. And those colors all kind of come through and, and help push that feeling forward, which I mm -hmm. think is... Right, because really they look like they're, you know, it. it's spinning. It's yeah. going in a motion. It's mm -hmm. creating this... Dynamic kind of... Kinetic energy. Kinetic, yeah. It's moving. Kinetic energy. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's moving. This one isn't. This one doesn't move. As no. I mean, it does. The background does, but the, the structure of the... The paint strokes are very gestural fluid, and moving yeah. and, mm -hmm. and moving around all over the place. But, but the, the shape seems like a, like a butterfly, like a static, like the, th like the thing. Hourglass. It is an hourglass. Yeah, okay. There's like that burnt, rusty color on the bottom and the, the pink color on the top. And the yellow that flows yellow. between them. The yellow is yeah. flowing between them. Mm -hmm. Sure, again, yeah, like fence, looking through fences, you know, maybe, maybe hourglass shape was involved here, like it's doing some kind of time related thing. Yeah. yeah. And it looks like the underpainting is also pink. <laughs> yeah, no, it does. You like can it's definitely see the pink, pink. <laughs> coming through. I, that's something we should have asked her. We didn't ask her. We didn't ask that. That's we okay. weren't thinking. Sometimes the artists tell us. Some some artists just spill all the beans to us all the time. So yeah, this one's kind of like waterfally though to me, or like hair, curly little like hair. hair. Mm hmm. But just the very. I, I once again, I love the variations of colors that are seen between each of the openings in the quote unquote fence. Right. Um, and how if you were to look through a fence and kind of blur your vision. Or a gate. Look, or a gate. Or a gate. Oh, or something. <laughs> some kind of iron, gates. wrought iron, you know, structure. Mm -hmm. You could unfocus your vision and you'd get that same kind of distorted color patches right. behind each of the of the things, which I think is really she she did a wonderful job with that. Absolutely. Ooh, this one's fun. I know, so chaotic. Yeah, <laughs> this one's, it's like somebody took the one that was all in lines uh -huh. and like blew it, and it like jumbled, jumbled, it jumbled yeah, <laughs> jumbled it all up. It's mm -hmm. like the really structural fence is now, or the the structural pattern of the fence is now this jumbled conglomeration of little yeah. X's and C's. <laughs> it is kind of like a C. Maybe you can see words in there somewhere. What? <laughs> <laughs> How uh, clever can you be? I, you mm -hmm. know, we like to take things at face, at face value. So, like, little fences, little gates. Like, this is a titled art show. Mm -hmm. It's very cohesive. It has all of the same kind of shapes and color schemes throughout, which is wonderful. We love that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, all of this being abstract artwork, you're going to get some kind of different idea. Or impression. One of them. Impression, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I suppose this is an impressionistic painting. Is it? A, yeah. Yeah, it is. In a way. I was thinking, I was trying to think of the word impressionist, uh -huh. and I thought of stylistic, and that wasn't the right word. Impressionism. Impressionist, for sure. Which yeah. is also oil on linen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's also for sale. Oil on linen for this one, too. The big spiral. The big spirally one. The big merry-go-round. <laughs> yeah, this one has a lot of 
energy with its centralized kind of focal point and it's moving outward and it's going in a direction yeah. at the same time. And the colors don't aren't necessarily all salt like the aren't all solid no. in in them. So there's lots of movement happening. Yeah, not at all. They're really placed in there in a very sporadic way. Mm -hmm. The use of yellow here. Um, I draw I'm drawn to the yellow. I'm I am too. drawn I like to the, the yellow. yellow. But yes, I definitely go straight to the yellow color. It's like the most outstanding piece, you know, piece of color there. Yep. And again, part of the theme, it's very on theme, which I like with the series yeah. of artwork. And I like the use of when something feels more, when one of her pieces feels more stagnant, she has mm -hmm. this solid dark background. Mm -hmm. Whereas if there's a lot of movement involved, there's like the dark is put in more sporadic places as though that blur is happening whereas this one is like it's the merry-go-round but it's still versus the merry-go-round that's spinning and, right right so sure yeah and i don't know they kind of have this like balloony shape mm -hmm. or me. like a heart shape and it's, it, they, it feels a little more heavy yeah than the other ones and settled and one Ooh, that's mostly blue. Interesting. Yeah, with a pink it's very, um, line. Oh, like snowflake esque, mm, mm -hmm. or fairy esque. I'd go fairy. There definitely was a lot of snow in Pennsylvania. That's true. Probably a lot of fairies too. Honestly, <laughs> definitely a lot of snow. <laughs> For sure, and mm -hmm. I could see that. I could see Snowflake. If I was thinking about Pennsylvania, and I like this, I think snow wow. <laughs> or lightning. For some reason, there was a lot of lightning in Pennsylvania. Okay. okay. I in the month of July, like lightning was popping off. So, so I don't know. For some reason, this makes me think of a thunderstorm. Okay. In Maybe a way, standing directly under the lightning as uh, it's like coming sure. down. Sure. <laughs> I got hit by the lightning. Did you? <laughs> yeah. No, no, yeah. I hit yeah, this yeah, painting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it's the most chaotic piece, mm -hmm. though. Because we got the central, the central, the central one. That one's central, pretty chaotic. Yeah. yeah, very chaotic. Central with a focal point. Mm -hmm. Central, central, yeah. Central, central, chaotic. Gesturally chaotic. Yes. Gesturally chaotic. That's great, <laughs> great definition for Thank that. Thank you so much. Yeah. Great. Uh, yeah. There we go, everyone. All right. Sheila is an amazing artist. She's a wonderful person. Her, oh, yes. her interview is yes. wonderful. So go ahead and... Stay tuned because the interview is up next. <laughs> so <laughs> please enjoy her interview so you can get to know her as well. My name is Sheila Laffer and I'm a painter. So a lot of my work is influenced by Pennsylvania Dutch folk art. I'm originally from Pennsylvania. And so I spent a lot of time looking at just the works that I would see in thrift stores or outside of barns. Um, there's a lot of really amazing folk art all over the place in Pennsylvania. Um, and one of the things that I've been interested in recently is ironwork, like decorative ironworks. Um, so the body of work that I created for the show are all kind of riffs on the same motif. I've just been trying to like really push that motif as far as it can possibly go and just like iterate on it. So these works are part of that exploration. That's an interesting question. In um, in some ways, it hasn't changed that much. I would say that I'm a pretty intuitive painter. Um, but, you know, I started uh, making art when I was really young. I was fortunate to be encouraged in art making by my parents. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of that was just trying to find my voice and find self-expression. Um, I feel like when I was in art school, um, I, my process changed really drastically because I was trying to like internalize and incorporate so much of the like conceptual work of art school um, and really trying to put like thinking into my process and like research and uh, that 
it, and I feel like in some ways I like forgot how to make art when I was in art school. Um, and so I've been trying to like get back to the more like intuitive, uh, like free risk taking that I feel like you have when you're really, really young, you're a little bit more uninhibited. And sometimes I like look back at really, really early drawings that I made and I'm like, man, I wish I could like still draw like that. So in some ways my process is like trying to, you know, let go of some of the extra stuff I learned in the institution. Um, and like bring that like free expression back into my process. So it's been a little bit of like a, a wave. I feel really lucky to be in a place where I can have a studio and get to it, you know, a few times a week. Um, I have a full-time job uh, in addition to being a painter and you know it's been an exercise and discipline to make myself come to the studio uh, both on the weekends and when I get off of work um, and so in the future I just hope that maybe I can get to a place where painting can be more of a focus in my life um, I don't know if I'll ever be able to be a painter full-time but that would be amazing um, and then to just continue to grow in my local community, there's a bunch of really great artists here and galleries and, uh, and it would be just my goal to continue to foster those relationships and grow in the community. Uh, no, short answer. <laughs> I've been in like definitely a process season. So I've been a little bit underground. Um, but I hope that sometime before the end of the year, um, I'll have like at least something booked. Um, but right now, you guys are the highlight of my of my year. Um, and yeah, we'll see what happens. But definitely a definitely a process moment for me right now. You know, so originally when I went to art school, I thought I wanted to be an illustrator. Um, and so I was trying really hard to conform to that idea, to develop an illustration style, to build a portfolio that would be, you know, make me desirable to editorial spots and um, that kind of freelance work. Um, and it was, that was really hard, not because I couldn't do the work, but I, it just didn't really feel genuine to who I was. And I, I think that I thought that because I like to draw, the only avenue for that space was uh, to be an illustrator. Um, and so as I've been you know, trying to embrace painting um, over the last couple of years, I've been trying really hard to figure out how to bring some of that illustration where I, I wanted to bring some of that illustration uh, practice into my paintings um, and try to make figurative work. Uh, but it had been a huge struggle to like bridge that gap. And so I've been slowly letting go of having my paintings need to be figurative and like embracing um, my other love of just mark making and process and kind of accept the um, abstractness that my paintings have become. I still have a lot of uh, figurative refer references uh, that I look to, but you know, that while I was trying to fit figurative images into my paintings, there was just like so much tension and not the good kind where they really didn't feel like they were working and I hated everything that I made. And so um, as I've been letting go of needing that in the work, uh, there's been a lot of interesting things that have started to happen with just form and color in an abstract sense. And I think now I'm kind of ready to maybe experiment a little bit with bringing figurativeness back into the work, but in a totally different way. It's cool. I mean, I, it feels like so much stuff is happening online and it's being consumed online and even like traditional galleries are doing online shows. So, I mean, feels like very much part of 
the future of buying and consuming art. I mean, I still, I still believe that being in front of an artwork is, you know, there's just, you can't compare an image of it to being in front of a painting. Um, so I wouldn't want to see viewing artworks in real life um, go away. Uh, but whether that space is traditional or not is not necessarily important. You can view amazing art in a garage, you know, gorilla gallery. Um, I'm excited to, to try out this type of space. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to seeing how the show is received. Um, I've, one of the, uh, things that I learned over the last year was how to take a proper photograph. So I'm glad to have been able to photograph this work and, and put it in a, you know, presentation that I, you know, hope everyone will love. So yeah, I'm really glad you asked me to be a part of it. She is or, so cool. Uh, I love yeah. her so much. <laughs> It was, I mean, I am, you know, thankful to have her in my family. Yes. And be able in to have life. spent so much time with her <laughs> yeah. over my life. And yeah, now, you know, nowadays we don't see each other as much, but I'm happy that we're both still in the art scene and doing what we love and having a good time doing that. Yeah. It's important to stay connected to family that you like. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sheila, for being Thank a part you. of our thing. We love you. <laughs> so if you're interested in having a show in our gallery... You're out of luck for this year. But next year, we've got a lot of openings. We are booked up until January of next year, which yes. is fantastic. Yes. I love it. I love it. I'm so excited. And kind of a sneak peek thing. There is a new art gallery and frame shop opening up in Tacoma soon. I can't say who. I can't say where. But we will know more of that in the future. We will know more of that soon. And it's more opportunities for artists to get their art out there. So please stay tuned. Check us out. Cool. Cool. Also, more information yeah. to come on that. And uh, yeah, the month of April is coming up. It's coming up very soon. It's coming soon. up very soon. And our next artist, artists, <laughs> plural, is a studio, actually. So Ooh. we have a studio showing artwork next month. And it's going to be our first body art show oh my god you guys i don't want to give this you guys any more information this is gonna be so that. cool you have to check it out you have to come back and you have to see what it's all about because it's gonna Absolutely. be amazing so stab our like button stab it stab it <laughs> with your mouse stab <laughs> it with your mouse <laughs> and then you you can be involved in uh, you can be updated when we're putting up new stuff yeah there is plenty of new stuff coming your way <laughs> so stay tuned yes and thank you we love we you appreciate guys. you <laughs> thanks for joining us <laughs> for the anxious tomatoes heirloom hour and join us again next time bear, bear, bear. thanks guys